Hey, Desmond Du here from No Sleep Creative. Today we have another master study tutorial on Bugs APU's animation. What really caught my eye are these radio rippling circles, which we will be recreating using shape layers, expressions, and some math formulas. But first, let's get to the motion analysis. Here's the reference scene for the animation in real time and 50% playback speed. What do you notice? Even at 50% speed, Things are still difficult to catch, but after looking at it frame by frame, I realized that this setup is just a series of rings and with a staggered animation of the circle size scaling up and down. And that's all for the analysis! So in After Effects create composition, there's 1920 by 1920 and click OK. The first thing we're going to do is to create a circle by double clicking on the ellipse tool. And we're just going to open up the ellipse path and add in a repeater over here. Open up the repeater options and open up the transform and we're going to create four slider control to link to some properties over here. We're going to need four of them. The first one, we are going to call it size. Let's hit command D to duplicate it and call the second one copies. The third one will be radius and the fourth one will be called my index. So we're going to make use of the layer index number to stagger the ripple animation later on. So let's start connecting everything. So let's option click on size, copies, anchor point, and as well as, um, let's see, the last one. Oh, that's all we need. And we can just pick width size and then copies as well. And for radius, because it actually has two value, x and y, we only want to change the y axis. So let's put square bracket zero, pick width to the radius, and then square bracket. And then we can click outside and set position to zero. And now let's increase the size to 50, and then the copies to be 20. And then let's increase our radius to be about 300. And nothing's going to happen until I just set my rotation. Uh, I change my rotation. And you can see it's in the radio arrangement. So I want this uh, repeated copies to be evenly spaced, uh, evenly spaced out. So we can do so by doing some simple math. In a circle, you know, there's 360 degree. All we need to do is take 360 divided by the number of copies. So this will yield. You know, to perf make it uh, perfectly, uh, we have perfectly evenly spaced um, circles like that. So, and the last thing we need to do is to center the anchor point. So if you press Command Shift H, you can see that the anchor point is still in the first circle. Let's press A on a shape layer, and you we can write an expression to lock the anchor point to the center of this, of this ring that we created. And what I usually do is actually I, I use an anim animation preset that I make. So I have a series of animation presets that I will reuse uh, over and over again. So you can easily create them on your own. They store, uh, they can store expression, they can store keyframes, uh, and even effects. So I have this one called Anchor Lock Five, and then you can see it has applied this expression for me to lock the anchor point. So you guys can just copy this expression, and then use it uh, for this tutorial. All right, so the next thing we want to do is have the numbers of copies of circle responsibly change based on the radius size. When, so when the radius becomes larger, we have more copies, and when it becomes smaller, we have less circles. So before we do that, let's first create a null object, and let's call this control, because we're going to use this as a master control for, for other, rings, uh, our other rings of circles. And we're going to need a bunch of slider control again, and I'm going to name the first one circle, underscore size. This is what we're going to use to animate the ripple later. And the second one is going to be called circle underscore spacing. And we have a third one, ring base underscore size. And then the ring spacing. And lastly, we have the duration, I call dir, for, how, for the staggering of the animation, uh, which we'll use later on. So let's go back into our shape layer. I'm going to rename it to one. Uh, actually, let's call it ring underscore one, and let's option click on the copies, and then let's type, let's create a variable called circ. So we need to figure out the circumference of the circle, and then divide it by the size of the circle along with the space we want in between. Uh, to get the circumference of the circle, the formula goes like two is two pi r. So we type in two times math dot pi. So that's how you get the pi value in After Effects times the radius, semicolon, and I'm going to create a new variable and get the spacing. So let's go back to our control and just n is equals to 
ring, uh, sorry, circle spacing, semicolon, and we just need to take circ divided by n and then semicolon. So we get an error because right now the circle size is, oh, the circle spacing is set to zero. So if I were to set it to about 50, we can see it's working again. But notice we, we have a, a decimal. So we, we want it to be a, a whole number. So we can round down this value by typing math.floor and open uh, with a parenthesis. Let's put, let's uh, copy and paste our, our two variables over here. And let's get rid of the semicolon. And this will round it down. So I have, I have like in a uh, in whole number. And now when I select my ring one and increase the radius, notice how, you know, the numbers of copies are changing as I change the radius. And if I want to increase the spacing of the, inc have more spacing, I can just increase the value in my master control like that. So I'm just going to set it to be 60 for now. So the next thing we want to do is to create those evenly spaced ring using expression. And we're going to make use of the layer index to do so. This is where the fourth side of control that we created called my index uh, comes into play. And uh, we can kind of offset the layer index number by writing expression. So let's option click on this slider control. And first of all, let's get our, the, our layer index, which is called index. And then we're going to minus it. We have a, like a start layer, uh, which will be our now layer over here called control. And we're going to grab this index, dot index. So two minus one will give you one. And we want it to start from zero. So let's type in minus one. So the value is zero. And when I duplicate it, Notice that the index number change. Let me just select ring number one. Notice that my index is four, even though my layer, my layer index is actually six. And when I grab this control over here, right, and I put it uh, just on top of ring one, the layer index becomes zero. So it, it's basically, our expression is basically starts counting from whatever this uh, now layer, uh, all the layers under this, under this now layer. So let's put it back on top. And we're going to delete all the other rings because we're not done with writing all expressions. And uh, let's, we're going to write expression onto the radius. And uh, we're going to create a series of variable. And the first variable we're going to create is to, let's grab our, our index first. And then let's pick with it to our slider control. And let's copy this line. We're going to use it about two more times later. And the next thing we want to do is to get our base size. So base is equals to, uh, let's pick width to the ring underscore base size, semicolon. And then we want the spacing. So it's equals to, and then let's do it again. And then we are going to type in, uh, so the interval, right? Uh, how much is to space out is uh, our fourth variable. We're going to type in spacing times my index and then the final value is basically base plus in, uh, interval and then we'll get zero that's because our slider control for in our now layer is zero so let's increase our base size to be about 300 and our ring spacing to be about 150 and now we want to hit command d on ring one notice it's evenly spaced and i can go to my controls and just you know change the, the values to uh, change the values of the spacing or if I want it to be wider I can also just change the ring base size like that and notice how everything is responsibly sizing the copies the copies of circles are responsibly sizing and we're almost done the last thing we need to do is alternate the colors of the series of ring and we can do so uh, we can automate the process with expression instead of adding, you know, manually adding fill color uh, into each ring. And we're going to create a now object and call this colors. And then we are going to just uh, go to our effects and preset panel and type in color control and drop in about three of them. I'm going to command D to have three of them. And I already have, I have all my colors ready. I'm going to paste it there. Okay. And so there's three effects here and they all have an effects number. So effect one, two, three. And we're going to make use of our index, uh, our, our index slider control here to reference the, the effects number over here. But as you know, we have more than, you know, we're going to have more than three, three rings. How, so when it comes to index number five or like beyond three, how is it re going to reference uh, the, the effects over we have over here since there's only three effects? 
uh, we can do so using the modulus operator. So I have to bring you to this page to kind of explain what's going on. So the modulus operator, which is you know denoted by the percentage sign, gives you the remainder of uh, a division operation. Basically, just think remainder. So one mod three will give you one because you know one divided by three. Uh, in we're talking about whole numbers here, so uh, one cannot be divided by three. So the the value is one, but when three mod three will you know, it's, there's no remainder, it becomes zero. And this whole process repeats. So you can see that we can get the, it get, we get this pattern of one, two, zero, one, two, zero. So we, so this is what a uh, modulus operator is good for. So we're gonna make use of the modulus operator uh, onto our, our my index slider control to kind of ref make this from one, two, three, one, two, three. And all we have to do is just add one uh, plus one and this will solve our problem. So let's go back into our demo over here and I am going to open up the ring and option click on the color and first of all let's get our index so my index is equals to pick width to the index slide control and then the number is equals to the num I'm going to create a variable called num so it's equals to my index mod which is percentage sign three. So since uh, this my index is zero, uh, so effects control, effects number starts at one, so we need to plus one, semicolon. And then now we can go to our color control over here, and then we can pick with this color, and then just get rid of the name color control and type in num, like that. And see the color change. So since our so my index, right? Oh, my index currently is at zero. Mod three, will which will give zero, and then plus one. So the index number is actually is the effects number we are referencing is the first one. And when I command D to begin it, see, notice how everything is, uh, you know, it's it's alternating in colors. And if I want to, I could go to just change the color control order, uh, and to just change things up. But I'm gonna leave it as it is. So our color control uh, setup is done here. And I'm just gonna reduce the, the rings uh, spacing to make it more dense. And the last thing we need to do over here is to kind of stagger the rippling animation. And this is where uh, the circle size, you know, in our, our control layer comes in. We're gonna animate this layer. So let's uh, put a stopwatch. We're gonna delete all the other rings first. Uh, so, and then let's go to our control layer and then let's press U and let's set, start from zero. So I already have my markers over here, I'm gonna zoom in. So at about frame seven, let's have it go 43. And then after that, and it's gonna, after at about six frames, 16, it's gonna become zero. And then it's gonna become, stay at zero for one frame before uh, going back to 43 again. And then after that, about five frames or three frames down, go back to zero. And just to make my life easier, or our lives easier, let's keep him assistant, easy is in. And nothing's gonna happen because it's on a now layer. We're gonna link this size control over here to that, uh, to this now slider. So let's option click on this stopwatch for the ring number one. And let's close whatever we do not need. So, uh, which is pretty much everything. Okay, so we're gonna create a variable called s to grab the values, the circle size control, semicolon. And again, we're gonna make use of my index. So let's grab my index and let's grab it. And then next we need the duration to stagger. Let's call it dir is equals to, so let's go to control layer and just pick with it to that slider control. And then, uh, so the stagger timing, or the offset timing, let's create a variable called offset, will be equals to my index, right, times the duration. But we need this, we want this to be in frames, so uh, in time, uh, because right now this is, we, I'm, I'm setting up to be frames uh, in frame number, so we have to convert it to time for After Effects to kind of evaluate. So we need to type in frames to time, and then we put in the duration. So, and then semicolon, 
And then after that, let's type in s.value at time and then time minus offset. So at full light, it's basically going to stagger based on this duration we input uh, on, the, uh, on this control layer. So I'm going to set it to be about two frames. And I'm getting error because of, let's see, I forgot to put an equal sign after my variable offset. And that should work. So if you play it, you know, it was just animate. It basically referencing the value. So since it's at layer zero, it's going to follow accordingly. Now, when I were to just duplicate this series of ring up to about, let's just make have about 15 rings. You can see, you know, we have this uh, rippling animation done and we only made use of about six keyframes. Yeah. So if I want to increase, make it, uh, if I want to stagger to be faster, I can set this duration to be one. If I want it to be slower, let's increase it to be about three, maybe about five, five frames and see. So it's kind of uh, more obvious. And yeah, that's how you build this rippling circle animation using expression. One last thing you can do, just like what I did in my preview animation, is to scale the precom, whatever we made, and had scale it from a, a large value. Uh, so 260%, 200%, basically we're zooming out just to enhance the shot and give it more, make it more dynamic. And we're done. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Please like, share, subscribe so this tutorial can get to more people. I hope you love this master study. All the expression I use is in the description below. As always, if you made something with this tutorial, please tag me on Instagram at ddesmondu because I love to see what you came up with on your own. Alright, that's all I have for you guys. I'll see you next time.